Hey everybody, we're going to pick up with causes of bleeding. Um, there are different types of bleeding and we're going to talk about those and different things that cause bleeding. Ble we can't always see bleeding. Sometimes bleeding is internal. Sometimes it's external. So we have to take those into consideration. So types of bleeding. Um, it can definitely be due to injury or trauma, which is what we see most often with people who need first aid, but not always. So there are two types of tra traumatic injuries that cause bleeding. Those are penetrating injuries. Those would be injuries like cuts, stabs, um, uh, um, punctures, um, anything like that would be a penetrating injury. Penetrating basically what it means is something goes through the skin um, and it could go into an organ. It could go just through a tissue. Um, it could just go through the skin, but those would be penetrating injuries that could cause uh, traumatic penetrating injuries that can cause trauma. Then we have blood injuries. Blood injuries, you guys get blood injuries all the time. We see them as bruises. Anytime we bump into anything, we get a bruise. Um, when you play sports from impact, you get a bruise. But sometimes we see people with blunt injuries due to um, fights. When they fall, they may hit their abdomen. Uh, they may hit their ribs and they may have broken something but have a really significant bruise. And so a bruise would be considered a blunt injury. Now, bruising is not always minor. Sometimes bruising is severe and we'll talk more about that, especially when it happens in the, in the trunk of the body. And we'll talk about that a little more later. One we may not think about as often or be, and it's definitely not visible is um, bleeding related to a disease process or medications. Um, sometimes medications like aspirin or Advil, um, medications that we may take regularly if we take them on an empty stomach, they or we take them without water, they can cause injury to the esophagus, to the stomach, um, and they can cause bleeding. Also, uh, sometimes people have ruptured large vessels, arteries, and they cause an aneurysm. An aneurysm is a rupture of a larger vessel that causes bleeding, and that can happen in the brain. It can happen in the lungs. It can happen in, um, generally, it can happen, happen in the aorta. aorta. Um, but people do have aneurysms. And then cancer. Sometimes we have bleeding issues related to cancer or hemophilia. Um, people who have hemophilia don't produce clotting factors so that they can stop bleeding. So if they have a minor injury, it could be life-threatening for someone with hemophilia. Um, cancers like leukemia, lymphoma, um, they may cause bleeding issues. Sometimes you have bleeding issues just because of treatment for cancer because you can't, uh, you can't produce platelets or you're not producing enough of, of a type of blood cell. So cancers can also cause bleeding. Okay, so that's basic basic types of bleeding. Now we're going to talk about wounds um, and wounds related to bleeding. So there are open and closed wounds, and they're pretty simple. Um, an open wound is there is an actual break in the skin. There's a cut. There's a puncture. Um, there's an abrasion. There is some kind of open wound that causes bleeding. Closed wounds are when the skin is intact. So Someone may have fallen and, and hit a ladder go on the way down and may have hit their abdomen and they have a bruise on their belly. Maybe they, you guys have, many of you have sprained your ankle and before you got to the sideline, wherever, um, or, the, or the side of the court, wherever you were, your ankle would be swollen and, I mean, it would start to bruise immediately. So that would be a closed wound. It's a type of injury that will cause immediate or pretty quick, fairly quickly would cause um, bruising. Now, sometimes with a bone, if you have a bone bruise, a deep bruise, that bruise may not show up for several days, but you feel the tenderness, the soreness, the change in the, your ability to utilize that area. So that would also be a closed, uh, a closed wound. Okay, now we're going to talk about types of wounds, and I'm going to warn you now, if you have a weak stomach, some of these are pretty graphic. Um, that is a, so open wounds are external and visible outside of the body where the skin is open. What you're seeing there is a puncture wound. 
um, or a stab wound. Um, so that is a wound that is a, considered a laceration um, and it would be an open wound. Different types of open wound when we look at the types of bleeding so that we know whether it what kind of injury it is. An arterial bleed, it is spurting red blood. It almost looks like a sprinkler because every time the heart beats, blood squirts out further. It'll continue to bleed the whole time, but as the heart contracts, then blood shoot I and mean, it will squirt far, kind of like a sprinkler. Um, the blood is bright red. It is not, when you guys get your blood drawn at the hospital or at the doctor's office, you guys know that the blood is um, very kind of a dark red, a rusty color red, dark red. Well, that's because that's venous blood. But arterial blood is bright red and it, it really, sh it shoots like a sprinkler and it is life-threatening. People can die quickly if pressure isn't applied using the pressure points above the artery um, and we don't try to, to, to slow that down, people can bleed out quickly. Um, a carotid um, arterial bleed can bleed out in a matter of about a minute and a half. A femoral bleed, which is in the, in the lower part of the leg, two to three minutes. Um, if someone has an aortic aneurysm, that means that the, the largest vessel, if you guys remember back to cardi the cardiovascular unit, that large vessel, that takes blood out to the rest of the body, if it were to rupture, um, they people don't live but a, about a minute, um, maybe less. Um, they lose consciousness within seconds. So we have to think about those things when we see someone bleeding. What kind of vessel has been damaged? And if it is an artery, we have to let them know at 911 that you suspect it's an arterial bleed because it's squirting blood or um, it's shooting blood like a sprinkler and it's bright, bright red. Um, and that way they're aware of that. But you've got to know to hold pressure not only on the artery or on the wound, but also try to find um, a, the pulse above it and put as much pressure on that as you can. Um, if the patient is awake and alert, try to have them help you hold it up above their heart level as long as they are able to. People tend to lose consciousness fairly quickly with an arterial bleed. So also it's something that if you can get some help, um, you definitely want to call out, yell out for help because you're going to need more than just yourself if someone becomes unconscious and they are not breathing. Um, you're definitely going to need um, assistance with CPR. Remember, arterial blood is how we get oxygen to the rest of the body. Um, and remember that if you lose a liter of blood and you can lose a liter of blood very quickly with a very significant arterial bleed that uh, that, you know, you go into shock very quickly. Venous bleeds. So that's still a pretty deep cut. It is. Um, and it's going to be a flowing blood. It's not going to be squirting like an arterial bleed. But it's going to be a flowing type of blood. It's going to be running down pretty uh, rapidly. And it's going to be that dark red blood. It's going to look kind of rusty. Um, it's not going to be, um, it's not necessarily going to be uh, squirting at all like, um, not going to be squirting at all like an arterial bleed. It is going to definitely be, um, though, bleeding pretty quickly. We still need to hold pressure on this uh, about 10 minutes. We need to hold pressure for about 10 minutes. And it's going to it's gonna clot where an arter, arterial bleed is not going to clot on its own. A venous bleed, if you hold pressure continuously, they still need to seek medical attention because if it's, if it's bleeding pretty significantly, um, you need to be sure that you... Excuse me, I got the hiccups this morning. Um, if you um, hold in pressure, it may still stop, but they still potentially could lose quite a bit of blood, so they still need to seek help. They're going to need stitches for this type of bleed, so they need to see the doctor. Um, also, um, but it, it will clot. It's going to take it a while, but it will clot. And let me tell you guys... Uh,
so um yeah it's like i said it's gonna clot but it's gonna take a while um so you just want to make sure that you continually hold pressure don't replace the dressing continue to apply um other material on top to continue hold the pressure and get them assistance capillary bleed now this is what we have all the time um <laughs> this is what we have all the time um, when we nick our finger, when we have road rash, when we have a minor injury. Um, it's not that constant running of blood where it won't, um, where it looks like a stream of blood running. This is kind of that oozing, dripping kind of, of bleeding. Um, and it's going it, to, it'll clot by itself or it's going to clot real quickly within a minute or two if you put pressure on it. Um, and once again, this is what we see pretty regularly. We're going to clean that up. We're not necessarily going to take someone unless they have some kind of clotting disorder. We're going to take care of that at home. We're going to clean it up. If there's any gravel in it, we're going to get the gravel out. We're going to kind of debride it a little bit and get any loose skin off. And then we're going to put some antibiotic ointment on it and cover it with a good dressing and keep it clean and dry to prevent infection. That's if it's a small area. Now, um, I will tell you, I've taken care of, of kiddos who've been in four-wheeler or dirt bike accidents, and they'll have an extensive amount of road rash. So, um, so with that, um, you want to be sure that you just look at the size of the wound. If it's a large wound, capillary bleeds are generally dirty. So they may need an antibiotic. They may need, may need to go to the emergency room. They may need to go to a minor emergency walk-in clinic or to see their regular doctor. But you just need to make sure if it's a very large wound or it looks kind of really, really dirty, they may need an antibiotic just to prevent infection. Okay, so we're going to talk about different types of wounds. So we talked about bleeding related to wounds. Now we're going to look at the types of wounds. And like I said, this particular type of wound, this particular piece, we're going to show what abrasions, incisions, lacerations, punctures, avulsions, and amputations look like. So just be aware you're going to see what that looks like in an image. Um, so just, you know, if you're, if you can't, if you're, if you have a weak stomach, just be sure that, uh, that you kind of glance away from that picture. So an abrasion, we are so, so familiar with abrasions. All of us have had abrasions. Um, and so that would be like a skin scrape, road rash, carpet burn. Um, so, you know, lots of kind of things that we get when we're out, when kids are outside playing. Um, or we have a, a, sim, a small fall. Um, I know I call it a court rash whenever... Um, people are playing basketball and they slide across the court and they get that um, little bit of open area because their leg got, uh, didn't slide very well or they kind of got um, an, a little open area from being on the basketball court. Um, softball and baseball players, football players get tons of, of what I consider road rash or um, abrasions from turf, from grass, from sliding into first or, sec uh, or second or third base or home. Um, or when they dive to, to make a catch, you know, they're, they're going to tend to get a lot of road rash. Uh, road rash tends to be really dirty. It'll have grass or dirt or sand or gravel um, in road rash. And so that needs to be cleaned, um, definitely, and any debris removed from it. And you want to, it's going to be a capillary bleed, so you may have to cover it, hold pressure for a second or two. But it should stop bleeding pretty quickly. You just have to remember to use antibiotic ointment and to really monitor abrasions because they do tend to get infected pretty quickly. And um, they also tend to, uh, they also tend to have, um, they tend to take a while to heal if they get infected. So you want to be sure that you monitor it for signs and symptoms of infection. And that would be redness, swelling, um, yellow or greenish drainage that has an odor. You want to look for those things. And if they, if you do have those kind of issues, you want to not contact your doctor because they lots of times will need an antibiotic for that. 
Incisions. So incisions we think most often happen with scissors or knives. It's something that we make incisions in the medical field all the time. It is a cut made by a sharp object and it's going to have smooth edges. Bleeds pretty freely. It's a good venous bleed. Um, so, and sometimes it's, depending on how deep it is, it may or may not need, need stitches. Um, but it's usually something that Unless it's a deep bleed, a deep bleed um, we should be able to manage it fairly well at home. Now, like I said, if for some reason um, it's fairly deep, it may need stitches or glue, depending on where it's at. It may need some Dermabond. Um, and we're going to monitor it also for those same signs and symptoms of infection. Um, excessive redness, excessive warmth. Um, drainage that is a yellowish or greenish in color and has a, a, a odor. Um, if that happens with any kind of wound, we want to be sure that you seek additional medical attention uh, or have that person seek additional medical attention. Um, other things we think about are, um, and you know, think about incisions coming with knives, um, with scissors, and with um, scalpels. Uh, we see most often in the emergency room, um, we see people who have cut themselves with box blades when they're cutting towards themselves or cut themselves in the kitchen with a, a kitchen knife while cutting up um, vegetables or something. So just, you know, like I said, be sure that you know the difference between these types of wounds. A laceration. Now, laceration probably... 95% of y'all have had some kind of laceration. And that's an injury related to some, uh, um, to, it could be to bump in your head, to a fall, um, to um, some kind of jagged, it's going to be jagged and it's going to be an irregular break in the skin. So it's not going to be that smooth cut. It's going to be jagged. It's going to have an irregular shape. It's going to be something that definitely has to be st stitched back together because, um, because of the nature, um, a cut, an incision usually can be glued back because it's just a smooth, clean edge. But with a laceration, the, the edges are really jagger, jaggered. Um, they're really irregular in shape. Um, and it's usually caused by a sharp object or trauma. Um, and they bleed quite a bit, especially if it's a head wound. Head wounds bleed a ton, but usually are venous bleeds. Most lacerations do need um, stitches within a, you want to you want to try to get them there within 12 hours of an incision. After 12 to 14 hours, most lacerations um, or any kind of open wound generally will have to heal what we call secondary. Primary um, closure is with stitches or staples or glue. Um, Dermabond is the, the brand of the glue that's used for surgical purposes. Um, but after 12 to 18 hours, because it could have gotten dirty by my other means, because it may not be able to be cleaned appropriately, because uh, microbes could have set in, we tend to not stitch that up after that because it's too much of a risk of the, it getting infected from the inside out. So that, that then that wound has to be packed and it takes a, a lot more care. So if someone does have a laceration or an incision, they do need to seek medical treatment so that it can be closed in a timely manner. Puncture wounds. So puncture wounds are wounds that pierce through the skin. Um, we see in the emergency room, you see knife wounds. You see uh, people that accidentally shoot a nail into their leg, uh, pencils in the arm, pencils in the eye, pins, um, ice picks. Um, I've seen wood. Um, that has actually shot out of a wood chipper that um, pierced through a guy's uh, upper arm. So the things to remember is a, a puncture is actually piercing through the skin. It's going to be something sticking. There's generally going to be something sticking out. Um, deep, 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 I'm sorry, deep. Uh, I've seen staples in fingers, um, staples in hands, you know, like the industrial staples. Um, I've even seen a farmer one time, he stapled his hand to the, um, with a fence staple, which are much thicker, but he accidentally stapled the um, space between his, the thumb pad between his index finger and thumb. He actually stapled that 
into the fence post. So um, he didn't pull it out of his skin, but he did get it out of the fence and have it bring it bring it over. Uh, fishing fishing uh, hooks. We see lots of fish hooks that puncture the skin. So those are things that may be puncturing the skin. Um, they don't bleed a whole lot because there's something in place. Now, there are things I need to, you to remember. If there is something sticking out of a person, we do not remove it. We never remove a, a puncture, any, the, the item that's causing the puncture, because we cannot see what it's sticking into. Um, the example you're seeing there, that's a kitchen knife, and that kitchen knife is actually sticking into the heart. So literally, he has to go into surgery before they can do anything about that, because if that were to be pulled out, he would bleed to death within sec within just a very small amount of time, within just in seconds. So we don't want to pull things out. We don't know if they're piercing an artery. We don't know if what what they have, they, we don't know if it's punctured a lung and it's keeping the lung inflated. Um, we just don't know. So we do not remove anything that is sticking out of a body. That, that is, uh, needs um, re, uh, x-rays and they need to be able to see what it's poking into and then they'll figure out what to do with it after that. But we do not. That is one thing to remember. Do not remove a puncture anything causing a puncture, not a nail, not a pen, not a knife, not a ice pick. We don't, we just don't remove it because it could cause excessive bleeding. An avulsion. Now the avulsion tends to be a little bit, uh, it, it tends to be a little bit gross to look at, but basically what's happened is the skin portion of the finger or a part of the foot or whatever, it has just kind of sloughed off. It bleeds I mean, excessively bleeds. Um, and But what happens with the difference between an avulsion and an amputation is the skin is still partially attached to where it's, it has come off of. So in that, you can see where it has, the top of the skin has of the finger has come off, but there's still a little bit attached. Um, we see this a lot with highline workers who wear a wedding, a normal wedding ring, and then they, they slide and their ring will get hung and it will just lift off um, the outer portion of that skin. You generally can see bone and tissue with those. Um, so that's what an avulsion is. An amputation is literally when part of the body has become attached. Um, I've seen pad thumb pads, which cover you know the whole bottom portion of the thumb. I've seen fingers. I've seen lower legs. I've seen, um, oh, a hand, a whole hand, um, an ear been torn off. Bull Rider got his ear stepped on and his whole ear got torn off. So you can have partial and complete. That means where part of the part of it is missing from the body or all of it is completely gone. So just remember what that is. The amputation is detachment of a portion or all of a body part from the body. Treatment for these. Um, Treatment for these can be a couple of different things. Hang on one second, guys. Let me check time here uh, just so I know where we are recording. Okay, hang on. Okay, we still have a few minutes. So let's keep going so we can get done with this. Um, and this because this is long. First aid and CPR are long. <laughs> So things to do with wounds, and we've talked a little bit about this. So a minor wound like a um, abrasion, a, a, a small laceration, we're going to wash that with soap and water really good. Uh, we're going to, if you're going to be, um, if you're going to be the one cleaning someone that you that may be injured and you don't know them, then you want to make sure that you cover your hands. Um, you don't know necessarily if someone has some kind of transmittable disorder with their blood. So gloves, um, plastic, a Ziploc bag around your hands, a saran wrap around your hands, a Walmart sack around your hands. Just protect yourself always. Then you want to clean, like I said, clean it gently with soap and mild soap and water. Just, you know, antibacterial soap. Then you want to cover it with a clean, clean dressing and apply pressure until it stops bleeding. 
Um, and then put on a Band-Aid, a bandage. The things you want to be sure that you avoid are what we would, and make sure it's too, um, and make sure the wound is not too tight by doing what's called PMS checks. And I know that sounds funny, but it is making sure there's they're able to um, have sensation, movement, and that it is not causing pain. So pain, movement, and sensation. You want to be able to make sure the wound is not hurt. It's not hurting worse because you put a dressing on. You want to make sure that they're able to still move it some and that they it's not tingling. You also want to make sure that you can still see the nail bed if you or that they, the skin is still pink around it. So you want to make sure that the skin is still pink. They do have some movement and some sensation left in it. If the skin becomes pale um, or it becomes a purpley color or dusky color, which would be a kind of a bluish color, it's on too tight. If, if it's very painful when you put that dressing on, it's probably too tight. If they are unable to move above or below the dressing, then it's probably too tight. Also, if they feel tingling or numbness in that related to that dressing, it is on too tight. So that's a minor wound. That would be uh, minor cuts, scrapes, abrasions, things that happen all the time around the house. Those are things that were, were you know, that aren't bleeding excessively, that stop bleeding within just a couple of minutes. Those would be minor wounds. Major wounds, those will be the ones like an arterial bleed, a bad venous bleed, um, puncture wounds, deep lacerations, deep um, incisions, avulsions, uh, amputations. All of those are considered major wounds. So we have to monitor ABCs first always, airway breathing circulation, and call 911. We also are looking at level of consciousness. We want to do our very best to, to apply a clean dressing apply direct uh, pressure with a clean dressing if possible. Sometimes that's not possible, but applying pressure is very important because we need to be sure that we slow bleeding as much as possible. We do not want to remove the dressing. We just want to continue to add more on top of it and to continue to hold pressure. Elevate the part of the bleeding if, if, if bleeding continues and then if possible, find the pulse above the um, above the wound and apply pressure to the pulse above the wound. You guys know how to check pulse now. You know all the locations of pulse. So if I had a deep cut in the lower part of my arm, then I would I would apply pressure to the brachial artery there in the bend of my arm where you're listening to blood pressure. If it's in the middle of my arm, I'm going to go under the armpit, the axillary artery. Um, you know, if it's in my lower leg, I'm going to find the popliteal pulse. If it's in the foot, I may find the uh, dorsal tibial or the posterior uh, uh, posterior tibial or the dorsal pedal pulse and put pressure on those to slow that bleeding down as much as possible. These wounds, if it is a major wound, it always needs to go to seek medical help. You need to call 911. Um, you need to get someone help as soon as possible with a major wound. So here we look at direct uh, pressure points. So you have the temporal artery. We have the um, brachiocephalic. We have the axillary. We have the radial, the brachial, the femoral, the iliac, the popliteal, and the dorsal uh, the dorsal pedialis. So uh, you have um, you learned all those pressure points or places you can take a pulse. That's also where you would apply direct pressure, and that's a significant amount of pressure. You're going to hold direct pressure above the wound to help slow bleeding. Know your pressure points. Treatment for major wounds, for if they're open, once again, seek medical attention for all, all major wounds. Um, they, may need, they may need a tetanus shot. They're probably going to need um, stitches or staples or uh, glue. Um, if there's a bone that's been a bone that's involved, the bone is going to need to be treated. Once again, you've got to do within 12 hours or less. Um, you've got to have that injury closed. Those sutures have to be done because after that, they just won't treat it. All animal and human bites that break the skin need to see a physician. If, they're, if you're bleeding from an animal bite or a human bite, you need to seek medical attention because you're going to need an antibiotic 
And then if it's a, a animal, they're going to need to contact animal control to see what needs to be done with your animal to make sure they didn't have uh, rabies, that it's been, had all of its vaccination, those kind of things. So just be sure that it all bites, remember that all bites, animal or human, must be seen by a physician. Um, we just have to make sure that they're treated appropriately, that they receive antibiotics as needed. They get closed. Most of the time we don't close those wounds. They have to heal secondary, but just that they are, um, are maintained appropriately. Um, amputated parts. So remember this about amputated parts. Uh, we need to call 911. We need to manage airway, breathing, circulation, apply direct pressure to wherever the, whatever, whatever part of the body, um, just below where it's been removed. We want to apply direct pressure, cover it up, hold, elevate it as much as possible, um, get, get them help and monitor their airway, breathing, circulation. We want to, if possible, we want to take the amputated body part, wrap it in a clean, dry cloth, and then in a plastic bag and seal it. Um, wrap it in saran wrap, put it in a Ziploc bag and seal it, and then place the sealed bag in ice cold water. We do not we do not put an amputated portion of the body on ice directly. It will kill it. It will not be able to be reattached. There are times that body parts can be reattached if they have been maintained appropriately. If they've been wrapped in something clean and dry, they've been put in a Ziploc bag, um, wrapped in saran wrap and put in a Ziploc bag, it's been sealed and it's been in ice water, sometimes they can be reattached. And if that's going to be a possibility, um, then we want to try as much as we can. But if you put it directly into water or ice, it will no longer be viable. It, we will just have to send that to biohazard. Closed wounds. Closed wounds are blunt injuries. What you're seeing over, up there is someone who has been run over by a car, over to the right. Um, though that calls in, causes internal bleeding. That means there's excessive abdominal bleeding, but you can't see it. People can bleed to death quickly from, from um, internal injuries. So if you see bruising on the abdomen, the back, um, you see bruising um, in the chest, you want to be sure that that you call a 911 immediately. Those injuries are life threatening and they are very, very serious. So abdominal bruising, bruising in the lower back, mid back, upper back, bruising in the rib cage, any any bruising like that that is um, that comes on suddenly or it's due to some kind of trauma, you need to call 911 and stay with that person monitor their airway breathing and circulation because the and their level of consciousness because their level of consciousness will change and then their ABCs will change. So you need to stay with that person until help arrives. Contusions are something we see all the time. Um, we get injuries from just bumping into things. So a contusion is what we consider just a regular old bruise. Um, we do have to watch contusions though. If they get very large, they can become what's in call what they can um, they can develop a hematoma, which is a, a, a kind of like a, a compact or a, a pocket of blood that may need to be drained. Or, um, but we need, but most contusions just heal on their own. Hematoma. Now, that's what I talked about a while ago. That's a pooling of blood under the skin. It causes excessive swelling. Um, and in those cases, lots of times we have to open that up and drain that. So it's just this pool or this large collected area of blood. It's going to get, it's going to bruise very quickly. Um, it's going to swell up very fast and it's going to cause, um, if it's in the, on that eye, he's not going to be able to see. Um, if it's in, in or near a joint or a bone, it may cause mobility issues. So a hematoma, something that is a definite pooling of blood there, needs to be seen by a physician. Treatment of closed injuries. We've talked about this a little bit. Airway breathing, circulation, and 911. When you're on the phone with 911, tell them what's going on with the patient. They have gotten, they fell off of a tractor and got run over by a tractor tire. Um, we have to watch them for shock, like I talked about, because they are bleeding inside, and it's no different than excessive bleeding on the outside. It's just you can't see how fast this is happening. 
So we have to report it. We have to get help. We can apply ice to the area. Um, we want to make sure that we put a shirt or a towel or something between that to slow the bleeding. Um, but we, and we, because we don't put ice directly on the skin because it can cause um, circulation it can, and, and it can damage the skin. But we want to apply ice as much as we can, but we want to stay with that patient until help arrives because if they have very bad internal injuries, um, they can go from talking to you to unconscious in a matter of minutes. Our t okay, uh, runes, what, these are the wounds. Remember the wounds that require immediate attention. So animal and all kinds of bites, animal and human, blunt injuries that have large bruises and swelling, puncture wounds, dirty wounds, uh, wounds that have things embedded in them, deep wounds into the muscle, the bone, a joint, or any of that, anything that is open, that has a wide opening and a gap. Or, and absolutely number one is all arterial bleed. And the order of reporting them should be arterial bleed, it should be a blunt injury, deep wounds, punctures, and then bites. They need, they all have to be reported and have to receive treatment immediately. Uh, we are going to stop here. We will talk about complications of wounds next. Um, if you have, guys have questions or you have any um, any concerns, let me know. Next class day, you will have a quiz, okay? All right, everybody, be sure you're taking good notes and you are prepared for your quiz. Uh, or actually, it'll be kind of a more like a short test um, next class day, okay? Thanks, everybody.